Hi, and welcome back to I Didn't Sign Up For This. I'm Christy Stern, I'm your host, and you have made it to episode 10, which, holy mackerel, 10, I made it to double digits, so that's like incredible to me. I'm so excited. Let's see, let's do our up top housekeeping here. Don't forget you can find us on facebook.com slash I-D-S-U-F-T podcast. That's our Facebook page where all the news and news and stuff you can use is will be there. Um, and then from there, there's a button to join the group where I'm hoping to start conversation. Uh, just been a little bit so far, but you know, I'd love to see more. So come on over there, join the group. It's a closed group. So you don't need to worry about um, like weirdos jumping in and reading all your information. Um, I'm keeping it closed because I think that's better. Um, and on all the things we are I D S U F T podcast, find us on all your favorite podcast apps um, at at I didn't sign up for this, and you can find us um, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play Music, etc. I didn't sign up for this. Teal logo, clipboard, the word no. That's us. That's where you can find us. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, stop strangers in the street, and tell them to listen to this podcast. They will gain information and become greater human beings as a result. Or not. I don't know. So um, let's see. One more housekeeping. I want to send out a special thank you shout out to my friend Travis, who um, after listening to the podcast, I like I showed up to do, like I said before, I'm a theatrical photographer. Travis and I, he played my brother King Triton when we did Little Mermaid last year exactly this time last year I was Ursula and he was King Triton so he's now like my honorary brother and I showed up to photograph he's doing Beauty and the Beast right now at the Woodstock Opera House if you are in the McHenry County area I would advise you to get some tickets for Beauty and the Beast and go see it because I shot this thing last week and it is amazing I was just agog the whole time I kept, that's the only word I could say. I'm just walking around going agog. But I showed up, um, I was backstage and he brought me a brand new Amazon Fire 7 inch tablet for Henry. Having heard all this incredible stuff about Henry and how many tablets he's been through. He brought that to me and we're doing a trade. He got that and I'm going to give him free photo CDs for like the next three shows. So major shout out to bro Travis. Dude, you got my back and I love you. Okay, this week, we are on the cusp of a very important day that I think is very important. It's on Wednesday. And I think it's an important day for many families who have someone special. Ten years ago, the Special Olympics organization began a campaign called Spread the Word to End the Word, and they started this in an effort to bring awareness about the horrible word retard and its derivatives, and they began challenging people not only to learn about the harmful impact, but to pledge to stop using it and to encourage others in their lives to stop using it as well. Of course, like anything that gets started in an attempt to encourage people to change behavior or language in an attempt to stop hurting people. Many stood up and continue to stand up to shake their fists and rail against political correctness and, uh, you know, shout about their rights to use whatever words they want or try to argue with those who are speaking out for their loved ones and argue with them about dictionary definitions and medical terminology as if we all who have medically diagnosed loved ones aren't aware of them. Ugh. You know, I, I do get tired of tiptoeing around it. I really do. I get tired of pretending like it doesn't matter. And I get so tired of living in a society that treats its most innocent like rubbish. It just, it has to stop. 
So this week, I want to talk about spread the word to end the word and the R word movement. The official date is March 7th this year. So Wednesday, I think they're starting a new, ca- I, don't, I don't know, I, when I go to the website, it looks different. Like we're, go- we're changing away from a, a negative stop using the R word and instead moving towards a spread the word inclusion. So we're going to, I want to see where that's going to go. Um, after 10 years, it's kind of cool that they're, that they're um, shifting it around a little bit. And this is really important because to us and our loved ones, it's important, like gut-wrenchingly important. And, you know, I know I'm being dramatic. I'm, what a shocker. I'm being dramatic. I can't help it. We all get ferocious when it comes to our kids and how they're treated by others. Think about, you know, when kids get bullied or teased by their schoolmates, you know, our claws come out. When they get treated like second class citizens by teachers or other adults they come in contact with, we fight back. But imagine if everyone who came in contact with your child viewed them as an inferior. When they're a child, when they're a teenager, when they're an adult. At best, they're treated like they can't understand anything or they're maybe ignored. And at worst, Others laugh at them, ridicule them, and call them names right to their face. People see them and they snicker with each other, bandying about hurtful descriptors or smiling condescendingly and talking about how cute or sweet it is that your child is out functioning like a person in the world in any capacity. I think back to when Henry was born and the simple ignorance that those around me gave to who he was. Um... People who, as I was holding him as an, I've got a newborn baby in my arms and they wouldn't congratulate me on my new child, but they would talk around him in kind of hushed, apologetic tones. I'm so sorry, they'd say. God has a plan, they'd say. Or God gives children like this to strong parents, One person even came right up to me as I held him, completely ignored him, and said to me, I'll pray for his healing. What? He doesn't need to be healed. He's not sick. He's not dying. There's nothing to heal. This is how he was made, and he's fine. Don't feel sorry for us. Don't act like he's got the consumption. He has Down syndrome. He was made this way on the very, very base level in his DNA. The condescending smiles or the complete lack of understanding about my kid, that's something I can handle. Ignorance is just that, ignorance. You don't know what you don't know. The other, however, the open mockery, the derision, the name calling, I don't know about you, but I don't think I could take that. If, if I encountered mockery and ridicule for, for Henry in my presence, I, I don't know what I would do. I, I don't think I could just sit by. But you know what? Henry and others like him just suck it up and they take it all the time. You know, they don't shout back, back at you, biatch, or they don't smack somebody in the face or even politely correct their misapprehensions. They drop their eyes and they try to blend into the woodwork. They pretend maybe they didn't understand or they didn't hear it. They listen to people whisper about them as they pass by. They hear people joke about things they've done or people they know being retarded when they just mean stupid or foolish. They get to stand there while some uppity bitch in the grocery store insists that someone else needs to bag their groceries because that one is too slow or doesn't do it right. They hear assholes complain to a manager that they shouldn't have to deal with or or talk to or, or, or freaking look at some retard at this place of business. They hear some waste of food complain they didn't get a job because they gave it to some retard. And yes, I saw this one just a couple weeks ago on Facebook where some young girl was bitching that she didn't get a job at McDonald's because a young man with autism got it instead. 
And it couldn't possibly be that maybe he was going to do the job better than her. It had to be because they had to give the job to a retard. It just sucks. It's everywhere. And they don't go postal. They don't kick somebody's ass. Like, you know, a person from another marginalized group might do if someone used a derogatory term about them. Nope. They hear it. They internalize it. They're made to feel like they shouldn't exist. And they just try to keep going. Uh, the, The suckage is so great. And in so many ways, I can't even fully express it. So in response, those of us who love and care for people who cannot stand up for and demand it for themselves for whatever reason, are trying to make it basically unpalatable to have that word in your mouth. And believe me, (laughs) having to say it here is just about as nauseating as it gets for me. Here's where it gets real. And I'm calling it out. And I'm also explaining it for the hard of hearing or those in the back row. I'm setting it off in its own paragraph, verbally, auditorily, because I want to highlight it. Imagine I'm saying this in bold print. Using the word retard, or I'm so retarded, or anything like that, such as joking about the short bus, or the Special Olympics, or anything like that, does not make the use okay. Period. It makes no difference if you are trying to belittle yourself or if you're actively hating on someone with special needs. Now, let me tell you why. You're not simply degrading yourself. Let's let's just look at it clinically. Let's break it down. If you say the sentence, I can't believe how retarded I acted Friday night. What are you really saying? Okay, the sentence structure says that your behavior on Friday night was stupid or ignorant or embarrassing or foolish or somewhere, somehow not up to the usual standard to which you hold yourself, okay? And by choosing the adjective retarded, based on the definition we all know and understand, to whom are you comparing yourself? Understand that using it like this, you cannot claim the other dictionary definition, which is a verb and means delay or hold back in terms of progress, development, or accomplishment. And I copied that directly from dictionary.com. So that is the definition. That is a verb. You chose an adjective, which means you have chosen a word, retarded, to describe a noun, I. So what does that adjective refer to in most people's minds? I'll just give you a second to let an image come to your head. If it is an image other than, say, a person with Down syndrome, a person with autism, a person with developmental or cognitive delays, I don't know what it is you just brought to mind, but it's not what most people would come up with. Now, you can't deny it. That is what your sentence is saying. You may not be coming out and saying flat out, I behaved like a person with Down syndrome. How dumb. But that is what you're saying. It's, it is absolutely, completely unacceptable. If you compared yourself unfavorably with a group of people based on race or gender or religion or sexual orientation, you would be held accountable. So why should this particular group of people be afforded any less dignity or respect or, come on, kindness? It just, it has to stop. It just, it has to stop. What have we become? Sometimes I think we've come so far in this area because we no longer institutionalize people with special needs and they're being mainstreamed in education. They're getting the intervention they need. They're accomplishing more and more every day. But our attitudes in general haven't changed that much. We avoid people who are different. We don't look at them. We don't talk to them. (sighs) It's almost like we think if we're nice to them and we treat them like actual human people, we'll catch their cooties or something. Get over it. 
You can't catch Down syndrome. You can't catch autism. You can't catch fragile X or cerebral palsy or hydrocephalus or any of the myriad other developmental and cognitive delays that make people different. But you know what you can catch from these people? Unconditional love, a more inclusive worldview, a a redefining of what it means to accomplish something, learning what joy and excitement and happiness really are, finding amazement in really small things, becoming a better person who's less focused on yourself and what you can get your hands on and how you can climb the ladder. Those are the things that you can catch from these people. And God forbid any of us should catch any of that. So spread the word to end the word is very special to our family. It's a day to get the word out about that word and its derivatives and how very, very hurtful and hateful and disparaging it is. It's it's an attempt to get people thinking about how retard is no different than the N-word or any other pejorative word that refers to someone's being. Being. It's no different because it devalues a group of people by making them small. It's simply an attempt to get people to stop using that word. Uh, please, stop using it. it. It serves no purpose other than to hurt. It makes an entire group of people into the butt of a joke. Could you imagine that? That your being and the being of people like you are nothing more than a punchline. I can't imagine it. I can think about it for my son. I can't imagine it for me. But I can only think how very, very painful it is. It's not okay, ever, for any group of people, for any group of people. But for this group, they won't tell you how you're mistaken in your worldview of people with special needs. They're not going to challenge you or front you down or beat you up for insulting them. Not that that should be what deters you. Well, instead, just simply wishing to respect fellow humans should be enough. People sometimes ask me why I've chosen to share Henry on my blog starting in 2004 and why I continue to share about him here and on Facebook and other places. I do it because this is what I believe. People with special needs and their issues will mean nothing to you if it's not made personal. As with nearly every other issue I can think of, your viewpoint is broadened and your perspective changes if and when it's made personal. If you don't know somebody personally who fits into the category, you won't care. So how can I make you care? Make you know someone. So my goal has been to have as many people as possible meet my son. First, just realize Henry exists and he's attached to someone you know, maybe just virtually through my blog and my podcast and maybe in real life. Then get to know more about him. Now you know someone that this is about. Now maybe you'll care a little more. Know Henry. He's a person with Down syndrome. He's not Down syndrome. It's not who he is. It's a small portion of who he is. He's also a person who loves animals fiercely, especially cows and giraffes and elephants and other farm animals. He's a person who dances with a passion and joy unlike anything I've ever seen. He's someone who loves to sing. And if he doesn't know the words, he'll simply insert animal names or the name he's calling his tablet right now or family members. He adores big, heavy books that he can set on his lap to flip through from the back to the front. His best friend is always his tablet because he can make it do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. He loves his family with abandon, sometimes a little too much abandoned, but still. He has a special affinity for his pop-pop. He loves to eat pasta and bananas and yogurt and applesauce and Cheerios. 
He digs Spinning and Elmo and Yo Gabba Gabba and Fresh Beat Band and Signing Time and Books About Animals, Jack's Big Music Show, Mickey Mouse, um, Bouncing, this one big Disney storybook that's missing a cover, but it has a ton of stories in it. And he has me read one page here and there. He loves mermaids and Miss Tina and sometimes in the same breath, Miss Tina Mermaid going to Walmart to get a new book. He loves ACDC and Chain of Fools and Parliament Funkadelic and Lady Marmalade and any other super funky music. He's a person. He has things that he loves and things that he hates just like you. Isn't that amazing? (laughs) If I've reached you even just a little bit, please consider going to r-word.org It's our word with a dash between the R and the word dot org and pledge to stop using that word. But more than that, pledge to start seeing people who are different as the individual human beings that they are. Maybe maybe pledge to get to know somebody who has special needs. If I haven't reached you and for some reason your need to use this word means more to you than actual people in the world, that's your right. No one will threaten you with jail time if you use it. And hopefully no one will be so offended that they'll commit battery against you. You have free speech and the absolute right to use any hateful, hurtful word you want, and no one can take that from you. But you must understand that your right may not be without consequences. You have the right to drop that and any other word you choose. But know that other people will react to it and they will judge you for it And they may choose not to interact with you because of it. And that's their right as well. Just as no one can tell you how to talk, you can't tell others how to react. With rights come responsibility and sometimes consequences. So I guess I'll leave you with a good luck with that. So that's spread the word to end the word. I hope that you will consider if it's, if it's a word that you use and it's just habit and it's something that you've slipped into unmeaningfully, I hope that maybe this podcast will help you rethink that when that word slips through your lips, that you'll, that you'll stop and, and realize what you said and maybe take a step back and apologize or think about how maybe you could choose a different word. If um, if it's not a word that you use anyway, I hope that maybe you will you will reach out to people around you. And I, I know for a lot of us who have already chosen never to use that word, the, word, the people around us already know <laughs> they know not to use it. Hopefully they well, they know not to use it around us. Hopefully they know not to use it at all. And they have come to a greater understanding of how it affects not only the people who it refers to, but also the people who love those people and how very much it hurts us when we hear that word because it diminishes the people that we love. And now it is time for I Didn't Sign Up For This. I don't have a specific story this week. Ah, I can't believe I didn't have anything specific, but that I think just maybe means that um, either I didn't do my research, (laughs) which could be I didn't really go back and, and dig through my archives to try to find something specific. But I did have two things that have kind of been sitting under my skin, stuck in my craw, as you might say. Um, Number one, things under my skin. I have them written down. Number one is car drop off. Now, this is this is something that has pissed me off since the dawn of man. Is when you have to drop your kid off at school and there's always a car drop off line or a car pickup line and 
there's a method to which you are supposed to, there's rules, you do it like this, you don't do this, blah de dee blee dee blue But inevitably, there are some assholes who think that they are special and that rules don't apply to them and that they can do whatever the bleeding hell they want because they are special, special people. I'm not going to say snowflakes because that word has gotten so bleh. I just don't like it anymore. So they are special magical beings who don't have to follow the rules and they ruin it for everyone else. This has been an issue since it was never an issue when my daughter first went to school. But when my eldest son started going to school, oh, Lord Almighty, he went to a school that was on a main thoroughfare, which had two lanes in each direction. OK, so it was a four lane roadway and the school was on this roadway roadway. There's one entrance into the parking lot to this school, one exit. So you go into the, you turn into this parking lot, and then you have to do a U-turn at the back of the parking lot to come out. There was no second exit. And there was always some, mm, so many bad words, person that felt that they didn't I don't know if they thought they were invisible or uh, they were a ghost or that they didn't affect the line in any way. But there was always someone who, say, would turn into the parking lot, stop immediately to let someone out of the car, which then held traffic up on the two lane road going into the park and then the two laid road going in the opposite direction because there'd be people waiting to turn left into the parking lot to cross it was so confusing and so annoying and there was one one car that always every single day behaved like they were made of god's hair and magic spit and didn't have to do anything right and they would they would they would go into the parking lot, go do the U-turn, come up and stop where you're just supposed to let your kid out really quickly and then go to get out of the way. They would stop and they would get out and they would go around and let their kid out and they would walk their kid to and they are blocking because there's only two lanes there wasn't room for people to come in and go out and have a car stopped at the curb. So there was one day, and I, I wrote about this on my blog and I didn't pull it up. There was one day I sat waiting to turn left into that parking lot, blocking traffic on a four lane thoroughfare for 11 minutes. E la van minutes. And boy, were people around me mad. But there wasn't anything I could do. I was stuck. So there are always people like that. It's been that way. When Henry went to we have a, a com well, it's not really a combination. There's a an elementary school and a middle school. But it's all like one continuous building. And there's just the elementary school is in one half and the middle school is in the other half. So he was in that particular huge building for 10 years or something like that. So, you know, I was going there every day. And when I dropped Henry off, I parked in the parking lot. I didn't sit in the drop off line. I parked in the parking lot because I would walk him in. And the people that would just whip around, you know, there's a line coming from the door to the school all the way up and around out to the road you know we're talking like 35 cars long and somebody's got to whip in and not to park in the parking lot but to whip around and come to the front of the line and drop off little special Susie and then leave and what are you doing stop it 
there's a line or people who aren't paying any attention. There's at least three instances I can think of where people in the people weren't paying attention. They either were in the drop off line and weren't watching or they were they were coming to whip around and we're crossing in the crosswalk and they just about take us out because they're just we have to go our lives are important okay just kill me that's cool we don't mind we wouldn't want you to be late for work so car drop off and and now the one that i fight with the most is for my my youngest son's elementary school comes along the back side of his school and it moves pretty quickly i don't know what cobs people have up their butts that they can't wait three minutes to get to the front of the line but whatever they come whipping around and getting and they've said it over and over again please stop please don't this is not for you to get out of your car and get, then get your kid out of the car this is you open the door and the kid gets out that's what this is drop off this is not everybody get out and help junior onto the sidewalk plus okay the the drop off is along the back of the school along the side of the school is where the buses drop off and i usually come up the front of the school i turn right onto the side of the school where the buses are and then i turn right again along the back of the school and there have been several times where you turn that first right and you have to stop because the buses have their lights on and there's stop signs out. So you have to stop. So I'm stopped and some, oh, the word I want to use right now, and I'm not going to use it because it's a little too much, even for my podcast. <sighs> mm. The bad man. <laughs> coming up behind me who doesn't feel like he has to wait for anybody and comes up behind goes to go around me and the stopped light flashing buses and goes up on the curb onto the grass to get around us and just goes flying through and, and I'm and I'm sitting behind the wheel of my car going Hey, but no, wait, hey, stop that, you. <laughs> and then I have to like tell the the person who's there at the drop off, this person is passing the stopped buses. Why are you, make them stop doing that because it's bad. <laughs> Why are people such assholes? I don't understand it just wait in the line it doesn't take that long you know follow the rules be in the line if you're dropping your kid off don't get out of your car don't whip around to let ashley burntine and braxton out of your car up ahead just just Follow the line and everyone will be happy. It will move smoothly. It will move smoothly enough and no one gets killed. You're not special. You're not a snowflake. I said it. I said I wasn't going to say that, but I did. Just stop. Just stop it now. Okay, that was number one. Number two, this is just a quick little, just a quick little one here. If perhaps someone takes the time to send you a message, whether it's a text message or a Facebook message or an email with a compliment or, you know, that, that they're thinking of you or even, you know, just something they were thinking regarding you. Take a minute and respond. You know, especially if it wasn't someone or something you were expecting, because they probably stepped down on a limb when they wrote it. And by not responding, now they probably think that you think they're an idiot. So, you know, if, if you get an unexpected message and someone says something like, I just wanted to take a minute to tell you that I was, I'm thinking of you, or I was impressed by something you did, or I think you're doing a great job. Just take a second and type, 
T-H-A-N-K-S, sand or something, you know, something, just, however that said, <laughs> I am the type of person where I usually get the, mo- the majority of my text messages or things like that, and I'm in the car and I see it, but I can't respond because I'm in the car. So my brain responds, but I forget to respond. And then probably people are thinking the same thing that I'm thinking right here is that they're going, oh, oh, God, she hates me or she thinks I'm an idiot when really it's like, but I did respond. Oh, that was in my brain. I'm so sorry. So I guess um, do your best. (laughs) Okay, that's, you know, I didn't sign up for any of this. I really didn't. I'm just, I'm just doing my best. Hey, you guys have a great week. We made it to 10. Thanks for being on the journey with me. We'll see about number 11. (laughs) No, we will. We'll have a number 11. I promise. Don't forget, check out the Facebook page, facebook.com slash IDSUFT podcast. Um, Hey, hop on over to iTunes. Give us five stars. Why not? i Aren't I cool? I deserve five stars just because I'm like really awesome. And no, oh, shut up. Okay. <laughs> uh, leave, leave a review, leave a comment, leave uh, five stars would be lovely. Um, shoot me an email, Christy at IDSUFTpodcast.com. No. Yeah. But okay. I'm really tired. It's 930. I'm going to stop and edit this puppy so that it's there for you tomorrow morning. Thanks so much. Have a great week. 